House of Representatives votes on Constitution Amendment bills, rejects extra legislative seats for women. House checks duplication of functions of government agencies. And House moves to have POS operations regulated. Hello, welcome to you and your reps. I am Victor Azo, thank you for joining us. Now, more than two-thirds of the Constitution Amendment bills secured votes required for approval in the House of Representatives. Among the unsuccessful bills are those seeking specific increases for women in some political offices and the placement of VAT on the exclusive legislative list. National Assembly correspondent Lamia Ali reports that bills seeking financial autonomy for local government, legislature and judiciary were also endorsed by House members. Attempts to put to rest the recent disagreements over who takes charge of value-added tax between the federal government and some states by way of constitutional review suffered a setback in the House of Representatives as members voted against its inclusion in the exclusive legislative list. Movements of airports, railway and correctional services from exclusive list to concurrence were successful, just as the bill enabling states to generate and distribute electricity. The separation of the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation from that of the Minister of Justice and the bill separating the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation and of the Federal Government were approved. Members drew their weight behind the bill granting power to summon the President and State Governor to the National and State Assemblies. Other fundamental provisions that made it true during the voting are the bills to establish National and State Council of Traditional Rulers and inclusion of former presiding officers of the National Assembly as members of the Council of State. Two women bills, the 111 Special Legislative Seats and the Affirmative Action Bill, which were voted upon in the presence of the wife of the Vice President, Dolapo Shimbajo, could not garner the required number of votes. If you do your math and you do your statistics, you will understand that it is this woman that come out en masse to vote for you and I. They come out en masse to vote for you and I. You cannot now be seen working against their interests. That given the circumstances that all other clauses that have gone out now were against the women, so to say. Plead to honorable members to please make sure that this thing passes and if need be, I would like to move for an amendment to make it 20%, not just 10%. It does not hurt. It does not injure. It does not do any harm to the Federal Republic if we bring our women folk up to speed. The only bill passed through voice vote to pacify women is the bill seeking reservation of 20% quota for women as ministers and commissioners. Thank you immensely for the contribution, resilience, patience, and you have demonstrated their uh, leadership by staying behind to the conclusion. And I want to thank you, and I wish our constituents would see those who are really working for them. All the bills approved by the National Assembly, however, have to secure same approval of two-thirds of state houses of assembly across the Federation. Meanwhile, coalition of women in Nigeria has stormed the National Assembly to express displeasure over outcome of voting on those gender-related items in the ongoing Constitution Amendment. National Assembly correspondent Dayo Gunshala reports that the action led to closure of the National Assembly gate. A few days to the commencement of voting on the items listed for alterations in the 1999 Constitution, Nigerian women were at the National Assembly to lobby the lawmakers for favorable consideration of some items considered key to their well-being. Even as the voting was about to commence on Tuesday, they did not relent. For Nigeria, there is victory. But following the outcome of the process, they are here again, this time to express displeasure over the rejection of some items they had long been advocated. The first being issues of citizenship. We have a constitution by virtue of section 26 of section 2, which says that when a woman is married to a foreigner, the foreigner cannot become a citizen of Nigeria even by registration. Whereas 
they don't have a corresponding provision for the men. We are not here to outsmart uh, the men. We are here to say, let us embrace ourselves and together find ways to complement, to find solutions across sectors. It is no longer going to be Uru for them. And at this point, I want to thank the president for having assented to the electoral act. It means that no man will carry ballot box again to be at the national assembly. Since 1996, we have been struggling. Today in Burundi, we have 60-50. 60-40. The coalition refused to speak with Senate delegation, insisting that they must meet with either the President of the Senate or Speaker House of Representatives. And you and your reps later caught up with Chairman of the House Committee on Women Affairs, Ori Yomi Adeumi on Nanuga, to gauge the mood of women in the House. I had a personal feeling that our men are afraid of the women and the power that they possess. The truth of the matter is, any woman you have, check your children. If you have a male child and a female child, if you see the way the female child would assert herself, you would know that if she was given the opportunity to stand by herself, you may not need her to lean on you. So a lot of women, all women, I want to say, have this capability and capacity to multitask. We can do 10 things at the same time. And unfortunately, there are statistics to show men are not that way wired. Men are wired in, I am doing this, let me finish it. And when I finish it, I'll go to the next one. He could have been influenced by religion, by culture, by, by um, chauvinism, or whatever it is you want to call it. But it was a personal decision at the end of the day. If you want to do something and then it doesn't turn out the way you want, they would say to you, oh, you should have explored some other opportunities or some other avenues. Of course, we agree. I mean, we would take that on board. We cannot say that we've done everything perfectly. I mean, because nothing is perfect. There would have been our own shortcomings, and we accept that. And for me, it's a learning curve. It's a painful and a difficult learning curve, but a learning curve all the same. So yes, we would take this on board. We, we probably, definitely didn't explore all the options. And we would, you know, going forward, you know, take all that on board and, you know, roll our sleeves up again and, you know, get on with it. Definitely, we're not giving up. I mean, in 1928, the UK passed the, um, I think is Equality Acts um, into, into law, 1928, and they've been on it since 18 something. So if when they started, they gave up, they wouldn't have that budge or that success in 1928. I mean, 100 years um, or more has been celebrated for the right of, for women to vote in the UK. So if they had stopped when they started, they wouldn't have gotten that success. So yes, we have um, a setback, which is what I see it as. It's a setback, but it's all, that's all, all that it is. It's just a setback. We are going to come back even stronger, um, do some much more hard work, but come back we will. And Majority Leader of the House of Representatives, Hassan Adodogua, has advised the aggrieved women not to rock the boat, but to work harder at some of the bills for better results in the future. Let's hear him. The women coming to the National Assembly by way of protest is not in any way an offense. After all, we're running a democracy. And when you operate democracy like the one we're operating, and everyone a group or an individual has the right to come and say his own opinion. And we provide for, we also provide for that platform for Nigerians out there to come and share with us what they think should be or what should not be. Uh, but I think uh, what has happened for me as a learning system, as a learning process, 
And the kind of democracy we're running, like I've always said, is a borrowed system. Then you wouldn't expect us to be perfect overnight. Uh, we are still following it up as a learning process. Uh, I think uh, we have done the best we could. Perhaps our best may not be good enough. Uh, but I think the women should take it lightly, very lightly. People like the Speaker of the House of Reps took it extra mile to make sure that, oh yes, these people are secured. Uh, some sense of relevance or sense of belonging in our leadership process. You know, we are Africans. You cannot rule out culture. You cannot rule out tradition. Sometimes religion plays a very great role. I want to say without any fear of uh, being quoted that some of these cultural, religious and social factors really played out. And perhaps maybe the women have not done enough lobby sufficiently. When you want to lobby a parliament of over 360, a senate of over 109, you need to take your time. You don't have to go house to house. But you must have to strategically plan your lobby system to be able to reach out to members of the National Assembly, not just in good time, but through the right voices. It appeared to me that the lobby for inclusion of women as it was on the reports of the Committee on Constitutional Alteration process uh, started only in the last one week. So how do you think members can be so convinced to now allow for 35%? This, of course, is not uh, 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 without any prejudice to my own position. You wouldn't expect that within seven days of a week that you can reach out to all these members, convince them, sensitize them, beg them, and to allow, see, to allow them see reasons in what you want to take by way of 35% affirmative action, not only in appointee, appointee positions, but in elective positions. And uh, no matter what, imagine yourself, put yourself in a shoe where a provision is now made to be passed by a house that is predominantly dominated by over 90% men to now pass a clause or an amendment that allows for an automatic seat, automatic one seat for a woman in every state out of the three senatorial districts. I think that is perfect. Uh, it may not be possible now, but I think as time continues, with a lot of engagement, a lot of enlightenment, and with the kind of development we are now going through as a nation, perhaps next time, I think uh, the women should take it lightly and because the fight is not yet over. They will still come back in the next four years to ask for one thing or, or the other. They have not gotten it now. Let them be patient. But for me, we have even gone next to the next level. We have gone one step ahead. These are people whose request in the report of the committee was for 10% appointed position in both subnationals and in the center. We now gave them 20%, perhaps to be able to appease and assuage them from the losses they have incurred in other provisions of the, of the Constitution Review Report, which were actually eventually did not pass. I think that should be taken in good faith. You asked for 10%, you now got 20%. No matter the controversy surrounding that even 20% we gave them, the Speaker went extra mile to ensure that, yes, we must have to allow women to be brought on board to be able to have some relevance in the course of the administration of this country by way of political leadership. Bicameral legislature simply means two legislative houses, as practiced in Nigeria. But what are the implications of having a bicameral legislature? This is what we went to find out from Chairman of the House Committee on Rules and Business, Abubakar Fulata. If you look at the parliament in Nigeria, you have two chambers, you have House of Representatives, you have also Senate. Now, these uh, uh, two chambers, they have equal powers. Equal powers. No chamber can pass a law without the consent of the other. That's why if a bill is initiated in the Senate, it must come to the House of Representatives for concurrence. If 
the House fails to concur with the position of the Senate, then that bill is dead on arrival. If, for example, the, the House passes a bill with some difference with that of the Senate, then a conference committee of equal numbers is set up to agree on a fixed position. If the bill is started by the House of Representatives, it must go back, it must go back to the Senate for concurrence. If for whatever reasons the Senate refuses to uh, concur with the House, that bill is automatically dead on arrival. If, however, the Senate passes the House of Representatives bill with some amendments, then a conference committee of equal number will be set up to uh, sort out the issues the surrounding this agreement. That's how we work. By cameral means two uh, chambers. Following the rejection of some gender bills by the House of Representatives and the protests that followed, you and your reps went to the streets to get the opinion of ordinary Nigerians on the subject. When the election comes, it is the women that are in the forefront. Most of the time you will see them, men, you won't see them on the queue. So why wouldn't they give us that opportunity so that we will carry Nigeria along? By the time they give more seats to women, you can see they will reform Nigeria. Nigeria will be a better place to live. Every country will emulate Nigeria for the women to lead in Nigeria. You know, they said uh, whatever man can do, women can do better. But uh, nevertheless, you people are asking for too much. Uh, that's why we see we want to give you, we don't want to give you too much. You have Federal Ministry of Women Affairs. Men does not have. Have you ever seen a Federal Ministry of uh, Men Affairs? <laughs> but they say Women Affairs. So, you see, so I think what you have gotten is enough for you people. So please try to sustain what, uh, what you have gotten so far before you ask for more. Women can do better than men, so there should be an extra seat for women. Men are logical beings, women are made up different from that. We need to join us together so that we can have a blend of emotions in making decisions. So I, th I think women should be given a chance. You know, the population of women in Nigeria is, is, is multiple of the, of the men. So there are supposed to be create more legislation so that the number can increase in the house. Now this week on You and Your Reps, we take a close look at the workings of the House Committee on the Navy. We engaged the committee's chairman, Yusuf Gagdi, who represents the Pangshin Kanam Kanke Federal Constituency of Plateau State. First, in discharging our primary responsibility of making laws for peace, order and good governance, the committee on Navy have done its best by coming up with more than six legislation that will that is aimed at improving the capacity of the Nigerian Navy. That if implemented, it will go a long way equally in strengthening the Navy to protect our waterways and protect our national assets in times of pipeline vandalization, in times of piracy and what have you. What are these laws? Navy have a university called Admiralty University that is run through PPP program, partnership with government and private sector. I initiated a legal framework that will legitimize the university, 
a legal framework that will establish the university. A legal framework that will make the university Nigerian own university. And I think uh, it has passed through second reading, it awaiting report of the Committee on Navy and Tertiary Institution to be submitted so that the National Assembly could pass that legislation that will strengthen that institution. The importance of that institution is to ensure that training and retraining of personnel, including Nigerians, who are willing to learn naval related courses in that university. We have come up with hydrographic agency. And what is the important? That hydrographic agency is it, equally a bill sponsored by myself, just like the Admiralty University. And again, the members of the Committee on Navy supported me. The bill was passed sometime last year by both two chambers of the National Assembly. It is with the president awaiting assent. And I, by the special grace of God, today or tomorrow, the bill is going to be assented to. What is the importance of the hydrography agency? It means we will have a hydrographer of the federation who is going to be a naval personnel. Why do we choose a naval personnel to be a hydrographer of the federation? We have seen bills, related agencies in other developed and developing countries who, who superintend over the agency and naval personnel. And why? Because just like the work of Surveyor General, who surveys land, the hydrographer surveys the water, Nigerian water, to give nautical information to show rigs, where rigs are positioned, to equally show where ships will pass that will avoid direct uh, spoiling those, those, those platforms. And it will equally boost the economy by providing the enablement for business within the waterways. That is the importance of hydrographic agency and equally to represent this country in hydrographic related activities across the globe. Again, uh, there are other things that, that are done in form of other legislation like uh, adjusting Nimasa law, amending it to be friendly to Navy, to be friendly to Nimasa itself, which was passed, it is in the Senate, and it is expected that that equally law is going to be passed. We have passed the, the Maritime Security Trust Fund, where that trust fund is expected to survive for eight years to generate money to the Nigerian Navy as a result of maritime-related business activities. That it should be the source of fund. So that at the end of the day, if this is done, platforms such as capital ships, warships, hydrographic survey ships, talks, boats, other vessels, including latest technology that Navy require to be able to ensure that production of crude oil is sustained without any attacks on our own assets. Navy need those capital intensive platforms. The only way to, to, to address such problem is establishing a platform, a maritime security trust fund that will generate funds for some certain moment to Navy to enable them acquire those one. Those bills too have been passed by the two chambers of the National Assembly. One of the clouds that we have conflict with the Senate, a conference committee has been put in place, chaired by myself, and we have sorted out the House of Reps have passed its own version. We are waiting for the Senate today to pass its version so that that bill can be communicated to Mr. President for assembly. We have visited in 2019, 2020, and 2021, all naval conformations and commands across the Federation to see what they have been doing with the allocation that has been allocated to them, to equally see whether in terms of their personal management, whether there is improvement. We have done that to checkmate them. This money, taxpayers' money, that has been allocated to Navy, have they been justifying that money in doing what they have asked to do with the money. Naval Committee have done that. We visited Lagos, we visited Port Harcourt, we visited Kogi, we visited Benue, we visited Kaduna, we visited uh, Cross River, Calabar. All the naval bases for commands and commission, including Delta, we have gone to such locations to interface with, 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 with the strategic commands at that level.
and that have put navy in its own tools but in discharging those functions too we've seen them doing well and we've commended them allocating funds to those agencies if you look at the consistent insecurity problem bedeviling this country that that is above description and how best you can support the armed forces in discharging their responsibility that is the most difficult thing these are the people that lose bullets on daily basis they feed on daily basis they lose uh, we strong platforms that are fighting as they fight insurgents insurgents fight them and they fight bandit bandit fight them they have human casualty and they have material casualties and those things need to be reinforced in times of recruitment as they grow as we lose them you need to recruit more how do you provide funds to enable expansion of barracks accommodations making logistic preparation in times of their salaries wages and allowances as you recruit you need to expand the barracks the accommodation most of the personnel of the nigerian army navy air force are staying in private apartment now simply because the barracks are not sufficient for them to these are some of the constraints and here is wishing the house committee on navy the very best as it guides the nigerian navy through those constraints and that's been you and your reps we thank you for watching i'm victor azu see you next time